uh, where areas exist where we don't have good fertile land, we can grow things hydroponically and mm -hmm. outsource. There are areas in the ocean where we can lower supported units that can grow food that's edible for people in the ocean. There are many edible plants. There's really no shortage. So only if there were severe shortages would that happen. Now they're letting out people from prison because they can't afford to feed them. So they're letting out a lot of people that they consider, you know, smoky pot or something that is not too dangerous. But later on, they will run out of more and more money and more and more criminals we let out. And there's more and more crime being committed now due to scarcity. So in our system, we try to provide for all people because you can go blind and you can develop cystic fibrosis or you can develop heart disease. So we give every research lab whatever the hell they need. No more digging up nickels and dimes for research in medicine, or this disease, disease, or that. We have the resources to give every research lab whatever they need. That's why you're always seeing medical people appealing for money for research. That is not a sane society. Look at all the money we spend on battleships, on warplanes, costing billions of dollars. Why don't they spend that money on medical research? What are you trying to dig up nickels and dimes for? Now, now, you still have difficulty. If you took the North Pole and the South Pole, and you took all the surplus foods that nations grow, and put it there, stored it, in case of an earthquake in Japan, Hong Kong, or anywhere, we'd have lots of food to go around instead of going to your school and say, can you bring in a box of oatmeal, and you a can of tomatoes up for the poor Japanese? We would have that built in. They say, well, what about automobile accidents? Automobile accidents is technical negligence. We've got gadgets today that I think most of you have seen. You walk up to your garage and the light goes on. The same kind of unit in an automobile. So I couldn't hit your car even if I wanted to. When I got within 40 feet, the brakes would go on. So they say, well, what about children crossing at school? Well, we have a section of pavement. When a kid presses a button to cross, the pavement turns up like that. So no car can hit a kid. That's the way we say we care. Our problems are not political, they're technical. If you still don't understand that, when I was a kid, well, you're going to have to look this up if you don't believe me, trolley cars used to have a platform. And when you got in, the seats ran all the way through. And when people were late for work, they'd climb on the platform, hang on. And they were hit by cars. So they painted a big sign, please. Get in the car, but don't hang on the platform. But people that were late to work still would hang on the platform. So the conductor had a rubber hose in the car or off the platform. Once the car started moving, he got in, and the guys hung on the platform. That went on for 10 years, until the car company went to an engineering firm. An engineering firm says, what, what do you want? We don't want people hanging on the platform. Good. They retracted the platform when you got in the car. Just turns out at the end of the problem. Most problems are technical, not political. Politicians have no idea of how to solve problems. And it's very easy to bridge the difference between nations if you don't attack them. But when I went to the first Klan meetings and the guy says to me, You're a smart guy, what do you think of the Ku Klux Klan? I said, It was a great organization, but it didn't go far enough. That causes, what do you mean? and you can talk to them. But if you attack, you lose it. You understand? So reason and logic is strictly bullshit. It doesn't work on people. When I brought a Japanese kid home one day, my mother said, I don't want that kind around. Loud enough for the kid to hear it. He said, so long, God. And I said, boy, if you can't get the blood of your mother, how are you going to change the world? So I said, I just use reason and logic. My mother, no way. I don't want that kind around. Let me tell you what happened. Until I told my mother a story <clears throat> that I was swimming in the East River and I couldn't get ashore and Masato threw a life raft to me. This is not true. Masato, the Japanese kid, my mother said, you mean he saved your life? I said, yeah. She said, oh my God, I heard his feeling. Yes, you did. 
He says, but I didn't know he saved your life. Well, now you do. Please, Jock, ask him to come back. I want to beg forgiveness. Ask him to come to dinner Friday. I want to ask him and tell him how sorry I am. I said to her, I don't know if he'll come back now to get her to plead with me more. And here she was pleading. Please, John, ask him to come back. So I told Masato, will you come in the door? My mother's going to hug you and kiss you because this is normal to my mother's background. That's why when her said to me, do you believe in love? Do you love your mother? I said, in what area? In the area of racism. She was a racist and, a, and she was antagonistic to foreigners. So I did not love her in that area. That's why I try to tell people that love is another bullshit word. Now let me tell you what I mean by that so you don't get mad at me. Is there anybody here that likes everything they've ever done? Okay, so we all do stupid things in the past. We do things we didn't like. Now if you live with a replica of yourself, how long will you be together? So sometimes you love yourself, sometimes you don't. So if you fall in love with a guy and a guy falls in love with a girl, you're married a few years. Sometimes you love him, sometimes you don't love him as much, sometimes you just don't like him, and sometimes you love him again. So it's a fluctuating thing, not a fixed thing. Do you understand that? You don't love yourself all the time any more than you can love anyone else all the time. So once you understand that, before that people used to get confused. Some girl told me she sent her boyfriend through medical school. And when he got out, he ran off with her best friend. She said, what a terrible person he is. I said, no, there's nothing wrong with that guy. Your ability to judge people is poor. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the world you live in. When you think it should be a certain way and it isn't, you get mad. It's your own values that are loud stuff, not the world. If you invite a guy or a person into your home that has no place to live, no place to sleep, and you're a good Christian, and they steal a lot of stuff and leave, you say, that lousy son of a bitch, it's you that have poor judgment. So we have to learn how to look at the world honestly. And in that way, we can arrive at better conclusions. You had a question. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, address um, what this gentleman was saying earlier and stuff. Um, just like, we're, as long as it's people trying to figure out a society that to live in, someone's always going to have to make some sort of consensus that people should follow by and stuff. But the thing is, is that if you're living in a free society, uh, all education, all knowledge, all, like as many like information that you can put into your brain is going to be available. So if like you don't want to learn something, and let's, well, let's say someone does build a machine, and this machine turns out to be detrimental to the society and stuff, well then you have the opportunity to say, wait, I can prove that this machine is detrimental and stuff. And that way you can go and you can show them. If you can prove it, everyone else is going to say, wow, you're right. We need to do away with this and change it or make whatever change that needs to be necessary. But if you, if, you, if you offer everyone that same education and the same chance to get it, like, like everyone's going to be empowered, not just one particular. One particular person might come up with a really good idea and it might work. And, it, and, and that would be great, but if, if someone found a flaw in it, they can always address that, show that to the public. What is your question? Oh, I, I, just, I just want to address what he I was saying earlier and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you asked like six or seven I know, questions. I didn't, I was yeah. Saying, I but I, I guess and, it went to a simple question. I mean, how do we try and prevent corruption? Can you override the machines? Is that what you want to know? Well, well the machines do not control people. Yeah. Just production of the machine of materials and deliver that to the supermarkets. It Absolutely. does not control people. Absolutely. Well, that, that's the thing about machines and stuff like that. Like, like I'm a computer programmer, so I understand like how machines, you know, get their data and stuff. And so like, like again, like you can always, as long as you, like, 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 there's no computer program that can ever come past me that I can say, oh, well, this is busted and stuff like that. Let me, I can show you where it's busted and how it, you can fix it and stuff like that. And it's proven and stuff. So, and so, like, in a society like that, everybody becomes a critic in a sense where they can always, like, look and say, okay, well, this is messed up and I can, I can fix this and show it to people and stuff. That's why I think this is such a great idea. Machines as decision makers would override people. Machines as decision makers. Yeah, well, how would they make decisions? Like how? Yeah, well, I mean, machine, machines can be overridden and stuff, 